What we need to go over first is what we could call trigonometry for physics. We're going to have to go over some trigonometry that's useful for physics. Now, the trigonometry that we're going to be covering is trigonometry that specifically refers to right triangles. Uh, what is a right triangle? A right triangle is a triangle with a right angle. Uh, I hope you know that a right angle is a 90 degree angle. So we're only going to be considering triangles with 90 degree angles. So here we have a right triangle. Maybe you know that the common symbol for a right angle is a little box. So we should be comfortable with this little symbol for a right angle, this little box. Uh, remember, what's a right angle? A 90 degree angle. So we're only going to be dealing with triangles with 90 degree angles. None of the angles in this triangle are 90 degrees. So this is not a right triangle. It doesn't have a right angle. So we're not going to be studying this type of triangle directly. We're going to be studying this type of triangle that has a 90 degree angle. If this angle is 30 degrees, how big is this angle? Well, maybe you're familiar with the idea that if you add up all the angles in a triangle, they add up to 180. If you add up all the angles, they add up to 180. Uh, but remember that we're only going to be dealing here with right triangles. Uh, since we're only dealing with right triangles, the triangles are all already going to have a 90 degree angle. This angle is already 90 degrees. If this angle is already 90 degrees, how many degrees does that leave for the other two angles? Well, remember that in total, there has to be 180 degrees. So if you already have 90 degrees in this angle, that means that the other two angles have to be 90 degrees together. So we know that this angle plus this angle have to be 90 degrees. Well, then this must be 60. You can check that 60 plus 30 plus 90 is 180. 60 plus 30 plus 90 is 180. There's 180 degrees in a triangle. But again, the simpler way to work is, since we're only going to be dealing with right triangles, uh, we don't need to try to add up to 180. We can just say that if you ignore the right angle, the two remaining angles have to add up to 90. These two angles always have to add up to 90, so that when you add the 90 degree angle, you've got 180. These two angles always have to add up to 90, so that when you also add in the right angle, another 90 degrees, you'll have 180. If this angle is 20 degrees, how big is this angle? Well, remember that this angle plus this angle have to add up to 90. So this must be 70. That's 90 minus 20. 90 minus 20 is 70. Let's say this is 35 degrees. If this is 35 degrees, how big is this angle? Well, it must be 90 minus 35 degrees. That's 55 degrees. You can check 55 plus 35 is 90. If this angle is 40 degrees, how big is this one? Well, 90 minus 40 is 50. So if this is 40, this would have to be 50 degrees. So if I tell you this angle, it should be easy to find the angle on the top. And if I tell you the angle on the top, it should be easy to find the angle on the bottom. How big is this angle? I hope you paused the video and gave that a shot. Well, here we have another right triangle. It doesn't look uh, as, uh, as uh, normal as this right triangle over here, but this is still a right triangle because it's got the little box showing the 90 degree angle. So we know that this angle plus this angle must be 90. So this angle must be 90 minus 16. So you can use your calculator if you need to to find 90 minus 16, and that would give you 74. 74 plus 16 is 90. So that we've seen that uh, if you ignore the right angle, the remaining two angles of a right triangle all, always have to add up to 90 degrees.
Now, obviously, a triangle has three sides. A triangle has three sides. Tri means three. A triangle has three angles and three sides. But there's two different types of sides. First of all, one of the sides is opposite the right angle. And that's called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. Can you see that this side here that I've labeled as height, the hypotenuse, can you see that this is opposite the 90 degree angle? I hope you can see why I would say that this side is opposite the 90 degree angle. Uh, that's the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side that is opposite the 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side of a right triangle. Turns out that the hypotenuse is always the longest side of the right triangle. Um, that's because it's opposite the biggest angle. Whoever is opposite the, opposite the biggest angle will be the biggest side. Well, in a right triangle, the biggest angle is always the right angle. By the way, obviously you can see that we're only talking about right triangles here. If you don't have a right triangle, there is no hypotenuse. If you don't have a right triangle, there is no hypotenuse because there is no right angle. Remember that the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. So if there's no right angle, there's no hypotenuse. Now, what do we call these other two sides? Well, those are called the legs. You can see that the legs are both adjacent to the right angle. This leg is kind of touching the right angle, and this leg is also kind of adjacent to or touching the right angle. Uh, but the hypotenuse is just opposite to the right angle. So we have three sides, one hypotenuse, and two legs. Label the hypotenuse and legs of this triangle. That was very easy, but I hope that you paused the video and gave that a shot. The hypotenuse is opposite to the 90 degree angle, and the two legs are adjacent to the 90 degree angle. Label the hypotenuse and legs of this triangle. The hypotenuse is opposite to the 90 degree angle, and the two legs are adjacent to the 90 degree angle. You can see that in all these triangles, the hypotenuse really is the longest side. Now, um, in this triangle, I'm going to be especially focusing on this angle here. For the moment now, I'm going to be kind of ignoring this angle up here. So I'm only going to label this angle. Let's call it theta. I'm going to put an asterisk here just to remind myself that right now I'm really focusing on this angle, not this angle at the top. Um, we could have focused on the angle at the top, but for the time being, I want to focus on this angle of theta at the bottom. All right. Now, um, we know that this is called the hypotenuse, um, and we know that there's two legs. How do we distinguish between the two legs? Well, if we focus on this angle of theta, we can say that one of the legs is adjacent to theta and one of the legs is opposite to theta. Maybe you can pause the video. Maybe you can already see which leg is adjacent to theta and which leg is opposite to theta. Well, doesn't it make sense? To say that this leg is adjacent to theta because it's actually touching this theta angle. Whereas this leg over here, can you see how this leg is opposite to theta? Um, nowhere does this leg really touch the two, the, um, the two things that are bounding uh, this angle of theta over here. Um, so I hope that you'll now take your time and convince yourself that this leg over here is adjacent to this angle of theta, and this leg is opposite to theta. Um, that, that's pretty important, so don't proceed until it's clear to you why we call this the adjacent side and this opposite. Remember, we're focusing on this angle with the asterisk. Well, you can see that this leg over here is one of the legs that is actually bounding or making up the angle. So it's clearly adjacent to the angle. But this leg over here is not really forming any part of the angle. So we can say that it's opposite to that angle. All right, so I hope that it's clear to you now how we can label the hypotenuse and the side that's adjacent to and opposite to an angle.
Now, if we had focused on this angle, the opposite and adjacent sides would have been different. But let's not think about that for a second. Right now, we're just focusing on this angle of theta at the bottom. If we focus on this angle of theta at the bottom, this horizontal side uh, leg is adjacent, and this vertical leg is opposite to that. 